Beach Grove number one, baby. This is the Cougar News. So, how many years have you taught at Beechcroft, or been at Beechcroft? Oh, been or taught? Um, I've taught at Beechcroft for 29 years, um, and so that means that I have been here as a student and a teacher for 33 years. So, quite a long time, but I'm still going. <laughs> <laughs> so, how is it to be a health teacher? Oh, it's awesome. It's, it's absolutely awesome. Um, when you can... When you can do something for a job that is also your passion, um, I think that's where it's a win-win situation. I love helping people learn about their bodies and how things work and how to take care of themselves so they can lead a healthy and happy life. Um, that brings me a lot of joy, a lot of joy. So what, what motivated you to start the Peace, um, Pride and Progress? Um, that was actually many years ago, back in 2005. That was actually a community service project that my, um, my class, there was one of my classes at the time, each of our classes did a, a project and that was one that they chose based on some issues kind of that we were having with our um, student body and they just weren't happy with the way things were going and they wanted to make a change. So they said, well, what can we do to bring that change about within our own school. And so they came up with those, the three P's. Peace, keep the peace within your surroundings. Don't worry about everybody else's drama or business. Pride, take pride in doing what is right. We've been taught that since we were, what, four years old, right from wrong. And then progress, make progress toward a brighter future by getting your education. We all know that that's empowering. So um, that's kind of how it was born. And it's just kind of evolved ever since then. Um, it's had better years. You know, some years have been better than others. But we, we like to keep it going. It's kind of like the foundation here at Beach Rock. So how does it feel to be an alumni? Um, I love being an alumni. I've said it a million times. Um, 
I've been a cougar, you know, born a cougar. I'm going to always be a cougar. Um, I hope to retire here, and I will always support the cougars. I grew up in this neighborhood. Um, this is my home, you know. Who says you can't go back? I'm home. So, I'm a cougar. Okay, and one last question. Okay. What was the hardest part about being a teenager for you? Ugh, the hardest part about being a teenager? Um, wow, that's, that's thinking back now. You really got me thinking back. Um, the hardest part about being a teenager? Maybe just finding um, my self-confidence back then. You know, it kind of evolves the older you get, the more things that you are able to accomplish. And um, back then I didn't feel like I had accomplished that much. So I think maybe it was just battling with maybe self-esteem. Um, but, you know, hey, since then things have gotten better. So it's all good. Martin Luther King Jr. was born in Atlanta, Georgia in 1929. Faith was always an important part of daily life as both his father and grandfather were Baptist ministers. He thrived at a segregated high school, graduating at 15, before heading off to Morehouse College. He then dedicated three years to theological study at Crozier Seminary in Pennsylvania. While earning his graduate degree at Boston University, he met Coretta Scott, who he would marry and have four children with. King and his family settled in Montgomery, Alabama, when he became the 20th pastor of the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church. When Rosa Parks was arrested for refusing to relinquish her seat to a white man on a Montgomery City bus in 1955, the incident lit a fire under the burgeoning civil rights movement. His boycott um, of the bus system in Montgomery, Alabama was tremendously, tremendously successful because he was incredibly strategic and he worked with other people to get the individuals in Montgomery, Alabama to understand that they weren't going to take it anymore. King's experience, passion for the cause, and position in the community gave him the credentials to become a leader in the 381-day boycott of the city buses. On December 20th, 1956, the Supreme Court ruled segregated buses to be unconstitutional. This was a major victory for the civil rights cause and proved King's nonviolent methods of protest could yield results. King was now the national face of the civil rights cause. He was jailed over 20 times, was once stabbed in the chest, his house was bombed, and he suffered relentless personal attacks on himself and his family. For a man of peaceful intentions, he unfortunately spent much of his life the target of violent intent. Yet the threats never stopped him. Dr. King inspired thousands of people through his eloquence and through his fearlessness, especially after his home was firebombed with his wife and his children. They showed through their courage that they were prepared to give their lives to the cause of freedom. King worked tirelessly to promote the cause he so strongly believed in, and from 1957 through 1968, he traveled over six million miles, delivered 2,500 speeches, wrote five books, and dozens of articles. His hard work and ability to communicate earned him such respect that he earned the ear of President John F. Kennedy, who personally met with King. Of all the speeches King delivered, none has stood the test of time like his famous I Have a Dream speech. Symbolically delivered from the steps of the Lincoln Memorial in 1963, in front of 250,000 people, both black and white. King had become such a force in America that he was named Time Magazine's Man of the Year in 1963. A nice achievement indeed but it paled in comparison when in 1964, he became the youngest man ever to win the Nobel Peace Prize. Martin Luther King Jr. was an American. He was deeply American. And what's striking to me is that he had more confidence and faith in American democracy, in the Constitution, and in the principles of fairness 
an opportunity than nearly all of his critics. While in Memphis to lead a protest march defending the rights of striking garbage workers in April of 1968, King delivered a rousing speech titled, I've Been to the Mountaintop. It would be his last, standing on the balcony of his second floor room at the Lorraine Motel in Memphis. King was shot and killed. In 1983, Ronald Reagan signed a proclamation declaring the third Monday of every January Martin Luther King Jr. Day, a public holiday to celebrate the man and what he stood for. What's your favorite food to eat during lunch? Chicken and waffles. Why? Is there a specific reason? Uh, I just, I don't know. It's just good. Yeah. Bad. Thank you. Favorite food to eat during lunch it has to be the. I love bananas. Just fruit. <laughs> Is there a reason? Um, because they're nice and they're yellow. <laughs> Probably just like some fast food, like a little McDonald's sandwich or something with chicken. Probably like some pizza. I love fruit, to be honest. I feel like I always have some type of fruit, like apples are delicious. Um, but then... Chipotle. Yes, Chipotle. I did have Chipotle. Chipotle yesterday. Chipotle is delicious. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. And so I like to eat a salad or I'll get like a Wendy's chili or something like that for lunch. Probably the nachos. My favorite food, um, pasta and sushi, I guess. My favorite food to eat during lunch is chicken salad. If I were to have to say something, I'd say a little, a little um, chicken taquito stuff. My favorite thing to eat during lunch is rice and vegetables, usually like in a stir fry or a curry. Is there a reason why? Because I make it a big batch on sat on Sundays, and then it's easy to just have it all week. Salad. Uh, curry. Wendy's. <laughs> Get a four for four. Make Wendy's four for four. Is there a reason why? Uh, well, no, it's it's blessed. It's blessed, <laughs> blessed. Subway. Uh, might be canes. Is there a reason why? No, I'm just like it, you know what I'm saying? I eat it like every day, so. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go with Chipotle if I had to go something quick and still spend a little bit of money, but have it taste really good. What's your favorite thing? Like a. Bowl, burrito. Uh, I'm gonna say double chicken bowl. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I probably like chips. Is there a reason why? Just chips? Yeah, no, just chips. Pizza. Is it like you have like a favorite pizza? Like cheese pizza. Cheese pizza? Yeah. I'm the Bea, and that was the Cougar News. Oh man, all this rise up is making me a little bit tired. I'm finna go home. Go Cougars.